Hi everybody and welcome to the final video in the audio data augmentation series. Today I'm going to show you how to use audio augmentations. Audio augmentations, as you might recall from the previous video, is an amazing library for performing audio data augmentation in Python that allows you to compose different transforms and chain them together and run them with different randomized parameters and with different probabilities of being used. Without any further ado, let's implement a simple augmentation chain in audio augmentation. Okay, so the first thing that I want to do is to import, well, let's say from audio augmentations, we'll import compose. So this is the object that will allow us to create the uh, augmentation chain. And then we need to import a few different uh, transforms. So. One that I'll use is add Gaussian no noise. So basically, uh, this is the equivalent of what we implemented when we implemented a function that adds white noise. Then I want to use pitch shift and let's say high pass filter. Now, if you want to use high pass filter, what you should do is installing, uh, let's put it here. PyDOP because Audimentation is going to be using PyDOP to uh, creating any sort of filter based uh, transforms. Okay. Uh, oh, by the way, if you want to install Audimentation, you can easily do that uh, from pip. So down here, you can just pip install Audimentation uh, like this. You are not going to need uh, this action in this tutorial if you're following along because I already put augmentations in the requirements.txt file. Okay, but uh, let's move on. So uh, the, the sort of like key here is that of like creating a an augmentation, right? Uh, so an augmentation chain. So and I'm going to call this augment and here we are going to create a we're going to instantiate a compose object and the compose object takes a, a free number of like transforms. So it can be one transform, it could be two transforms, it can be n transforms. And the idea is that like, the data will move like from one transform to the other transform in a sort of like orderly uh, manner. So that's why we pass in here a, uh, a list, right? And uh, here we're going to pass the add uh, Gaussian noise first. So we want to add some white noise first. And this is the, the object and we want to instantiate this object and we can instantiate this object with uh, a bunch of like different uh, values. So uh, we need a min amplitude and a max amplitude. So this is the min amplitude and I'll put 0.1 and then the max amplitude we want to mix in our uh, noise within the signal is I don't know let's say 0.2 and then there's a final value that's called uh, p this argument is the probability of this particular um, transform to be um, called when we augment a, some data. Uh, so this is done so that when you run this multiple times, sometimes you're going to have, for example, like um, adding Gaussian, no, uh, Gaussian noise. Sometimes you're not going to have that. So it's going to create some sort of like variance uh, and variation in the type of augmentation that you're going to get. Right. So given like we want to demonstrate this and have like all the different um, sort of like transforms actually being applied. So I'm going to put P equal to one. So we have probability one of using, of adding white noise. Okay. So this is one, then we'll have pitch shifts and this transform works like very similarly to like any other transform. So we instantiate it and we pass uh, sort of like arguments and then we need to pass the probability of having this transform as well. So in this case, uh, we can give m a minimum number of semitones. We want to uh, we want to probably go down or up, and I'd say like let's go down to minus eight, and then the max number of uh, semitones, and let's go up 
eight semitones. And then we'll pass the probability, and as we did for Adga Goshi Noise, we'll just pass probability one. Okay, so uh, the cool thing about this is that also like these parameters, so like the, the number of semitones that we'll use for pitch shifting is gonna be taken uh, randomly, right? So, and the, we just pass the range here. So we pass the, the minimum range, which is minus eight semitones. So we're sort of like transposing down our scale and or going up eight uh, semitones. Okay. Uh, so the final transform that we want in this augmentation chain is high pass uh, filter. So this is just like a uh, filter, a normal like high pass filter. So the, the minimum uh, cutoff frequency, I don't know, I'll just put it to 2000 Hertz. And max cutoff frequency, I'll put it to 4000 Hertz. And the probability as always equal to one. So now this is our augment. This is our uh, augment um, sort of like objects. Now that we have our augmentation chain ready, the next step is that of applying it to a signal. And the signal that we'll be using is a simple C major scale on a piano that we already used in video number three in the series. Right, so let's create a script here. So if the name is equal to main, then the first thing that we wanna do is load the uh, load the file. So signal and we'll get the sample rate and we'll get it from Librosa.load and we'll pass the path here which is scale.wave. Now of course we have to import uh, Librosa so we'll do an import Librosa up here. Okay so what's next? Well, now we want to augment our signal. So here we're gonna have the augmented uh, signal. And to apply our chain to the signal, we should call uh, augment and pass as um, arguments the signal itself that we want to uh, augment as well as the its sample rate. Okay, so here we should have the augmented signal. Final thing that we want to do is just store the augmented signal as a WAV file. And for that, we need to import sound file as SF. And down here, we'll do an SF.write and we'll pass the file, which we'll call augmented.wav. Then we'll pass the data, which is augmented signal. And uh, finally, we'll pass the uh, sample rate, I believe. Let's see. Let's double check that. So, yeah. Okay, so now let's run this and check the results. Okay. Let's go here. So let's uh, listen to the original scale. Good, now let's hear, let's listen to the augmented scale. Yeah. As you can hear, or almost hear, so you have some wet noise added here, and then you had a transposition uh, of the scale itself. And you also had a high pass filter there. So it was very difficult to hear like the, the, the base uh, frequencies there. Cool. So this is how you create a very complex augmentation chain just by using a simple, a single compose object. So in a very simple manner, you can create very complex augmentation chains, which have a random way of like using or selecting parameters for the different transforms and a randomization of the different um, sort of transforms that you want to apply. We've arrived to the end of this audio data augmentation series. I hope you've enjoyed the journey. For me, it's been a great time like talking about like this really cool 
things. By now you should have a very good understanding of audio data augmentation, the, both the theoretical aspects of it, so what it is, how it is used and why it is important and the different use cases when you should uh, use it. You've also learned about the different techniques that you can use both in the audio domain and the spectrogram domains and now you should also be able to implement a few audio uh, augmentation techniques by yourself and then know about the different uh, libraries that you can use when working in production with audio data augmentation. That's all for today. I hope you liked this. If that's the case, please leave a like and share this video and this series with your friends because that is going to help the channel grow quite a lot and help uh, having like this free content coming more and more. Cheers for now.